Well, it's safe to say that I have more vehicles than I know what to do with. I thought today it might be nice to do a video kind of going through all the vehicles on the channel. I know people have been asking in the comments about specific things, if I own them, um, if they're operable, and thought it might be nice to kind of get you all updated and be transparent about all of the camping vehicles and non-camping vehicles. All right, so here we are. Here are all the vehicles in one location. There's seven in total, five of which are meant for camping, two of which are not so much. We've got ourselves a couple hoopties, not gonna say any names. Four of my vehicles here are camping vehicles, but we're just gonna kind of pull everything forward. I'm gonna give you a rundown um, of what's in my garage. one that you guys are very familiar with, something that started the channel, my 2011 F-150 FX4. So although this truck was one of my first investments for the channel and for my career, uh, it has been kind of one of my most reliable vehicles. It's had its moments, don't get me wrong, but it's been on a lot of road with me. Come by my tree stand, bud. Meh. Back in the day, I purchased this truck with 77,000 miles on it for around $21,000. And oddly enough, if I bought the same truck with the same amount of miles a day, it would sell for about the same. Under the hood, we have the ever so famous 5.0 V8. I decided to go with this motor versus the EcoBoost because when I was buying a used truck, I didn't want to worry about a turbo going out. And see, it's got a fair amount of dirt on the inside, some sketchy wiring for some of my camping stuff, but it's been running pretty good. Although lately I might be thinking I have a cylinder misfire because it's kind of starting to sound like a diesel. When I first decided to do a YouTube channel, this was my first gamble. It's my first truck payment and my only car payment I've ever had. It's been through the thick and thin with me, definitely paid itself off, been on a lot of adventures, and I wouldn't take any of it back. Originally when I started truck camping, I had a different shell on here. You remember the gray shell, your true OG of the channel. Now we've got a ARE mid-rise topper on the back of here. Gives me some more space. Of course we have my built-out camping setup that I rebuilt last year, featuring a diesel heater around 300 watt hours of lithium battery that actually charges off of my alternator, hence some of the sketchy wiring that you saw. And one of my favorite features on here is the wind doors that have, ugh, they have ventilation. So you can keep the bugs out, but let cool breeze in. On top of my roof rack, I've got LED lights that illuminate the sides, a little cell phone booster, a 270 degree awning, and a fishing rod holder that I made out of a conduit kit that can fit up to 10 foot fishing rods up there. On my first road trip with this vehicle out to California, uh, I actually blew out two rims on the passenger side. So that's when I decided to get myself some Raptor wheels. And I had some damage to my side steps too. So I got some Raptor side steps. One of my favorite features about this truck is the amount of storage that I have in here. Obviously this is the vehicle that I usually take when I'm going on long road trips. Of course you gotta have a pull out closet. I mean, technically is that a walk-in? One of the first things I installed in this truck was a battery isolator solenoid, which basically is, in layman terms, is 
the ability for my truck's alternator to charge that giant hefty battery system that you see in the back. And that is the big reason for a lot of the sketchy wiring. All right, the next vehicle is a little less practical and a lot more goofy. My 1960s Arenado, which is a combination of an Airstream and a 69 Tornado on the front half. I purchased this cloudy with a chance of meatballs looking car out in Indiana last year in South Bend to be exact um, after I saw a Facebook post go viral and it had over like 7,000 shares I saw a for sale sign in the window right here and so I did a little investigating made some calls and found out that it was actually for sale and after some negotiating this beauty was mine for around $23,000. This vehicle has been living most of its life in this spot since I made it back on that road trip which was about nine hours of driving through slush and snow from Illinois to Minnesota. And the engine bay is a little, a little less than adequate right now. You can see zip ties, you can see springs with bent wire around them. It starts up right now, but it doesn't drive the greatest, making this thing kind of fall in the hoopty category. Although it is a hoopty, it is a one of one coming on inside here, you can see that pretty much everything inside of this Airstream is would be exactly how it would be to spec if you were to purchase it in the 60s. As of now, I have plans to fix this thing up. My friend Drew is actually on the way, if you remember him. He was kind enough to help us out with one of my other vehicles last year. And we're going to be restoring the inside of the Airstream. Honestly, it's not too terrible in here for storage. A lot of these cabinets are really nice. My favorite feature of this vehicle is definitely not this gas pedal that makes your foot go in ways that it probably shouldn't. Might possibly be my new roadside buddy, Goofy. Your AC and your fan are all in one here when it does decide to work, but this is a vehicle that definitely has a lot of potential. Coming around to the back side of this puppy, you can see the uh, custom exhaust work that was done on here. I was told it was costing around somewhere to three to $4,000 to get these put on, and it really enunciates the sound of the 7.72 liter V8 that came stock in the 69 Tornado. I also do think it is really funny that there is a tow hitch back here because I would never trust this vehicle for the life of me towing. It is the one vehicle that I own that when you step foot in, it feels like grandma's house. And if you have any uh, experience working on old engines, please leave a comment in the, in the section down below because I need all the help I can get with this. But expect to see a future video fixing it up and uh, getting it back on the road. Moving on to my favorite vehicle of the fleet, which would be Steve. Steve is a JDM. He is a Toyota Hi Ace from 1992 that I picked up two winters ago, and he has been an absolute trooper. He features a naturally aspirated 2.4 liter diesel engine and gets a grand whopping total of 85 wheel horsepower in this puppy. Many people don't believe that cars from the 90s came with cruise control. Well, here it is. You just wedge this thing between your gas pedal and your seat and cruise on, baby. Topping out at just over 55 miles an hour on the freeway, going fast has never looked so cool with his original racing stripes down the side and fun modifications on the inside. Surprisingly enough though, he does get 25 miles a gallon, even with all of the weight from the solar panels and the embellishments we did on the inside. And he does feature something that I've never seen before in a Toyota High Ace, and that would be this really cool toy hauler back. With a toy hauler back, you can fit whatever you want in here, whether it be mountain bikes, snowboards, fishing rods, and then you can also enjoy the, uh, the view that you have on your campsite. 
This is the vehicle that Drew helped me out with last year in redoing, and I gotta say, it looks stellar in here still. I think that's why it's one of my favorite vehicles, is because of just how nice it turned out. The lighting, the teakwood countertops, the farmhouse style sink, and of course the ability to stand. One of the most asked about things on the vehicles are Steve's wheels. People ask if the rear tire is actually bigger than the front, and it indeed is. I believe the front tire is 17 inches while the rear sits at 15. Um, this is how it came stock. I realize that on some cars, um, it might throw a lot of alarms and break things faster, but we haven't had any issues yet. Knock on, knock on Steve. With just the turn of this dial, I can turn Steve from a rear wheel two wheel drive to a four wheel drive beast. And for the most part, he's been very dependable. I did recently have a voltage regulator go out in Steve, so he was throwing every alarm in the book at me. Um, but hopefully now he's, he's running smooth and you can expect to see some winter content and going on a fairly large road trip with him. We love you, Stevie, and your new fresh glass. Right next to my favorite, we have my largest headache and another member of the hoopty category my Humvee. I purchased this 2002 General M1123 a bit over a year ago with the full intention of turning it into the most capable camping vehicle that I own. This one features a big Haas motor, a 6.5 liter naturally aspirated diesel motor. Originally, all I did was replace the spark plugs and it ran true with one caveat. And that would be the batteries. Somewhere in this mess, there's a bad ground going on. I know it's hard to imagine with hot glue, but single-handedly this thing has cost me $1,600 in batteries just because it actually like just destroys batteries. I bought brand new batteries last year, yellow tops, like really nice gel batteries and it's destroyed two sets of them. Oh, there's a little bird nest. I really gotta get working on this thing. There's freaking birds living in it. Somehow on the listing when I bought it, it said there was three miles total on it, but um, I mean, to me it seems like there might have been a little more than three miles on it. I did purchase this vehicle with a soft top and no doors on it for around $14,000. And for the doors and other embellishments that I bought for it, I put roughly three to four grand into it. As you can see on the backside, there's a lot of potential here. We can do some things with this. We can work with it. Although it's not pretty yet, it can be. Now moving on to the next vehicle, this one's probably the best investment that I've ever made. And that would be my 2002 Volkswagen Beetle with a custom camper shell on it. I purchased this thing two years ago from a local person in Minnesota and it was only $3,000. Now granted it had 250,000 miles on it, but still, three grand, come on. Ironically, this is the vehicle I learned how to drive stick in. And it is uh, one of my favorites to drive. And no, that's not because of the 1.8 liter TDI engine that's in this thing. It's because it just catches people's attention. This bug or bugless is 100% to blame for me figuring out how to drive stick. It features a five speed manual transmission. And uh, let's just say when I first started driving manual, I stalled it quite a few times. No, fuck! <laughs> Down bad. So much to the point where uh, I actually burnt out the clutch within the first week. If there is one word for this vehicle, it has to be corky. And it comes with its own set of corks when trying to fill up with gas.
Ah. I don't even think I can fill up here. You just, you just gotta go slow. You can't. You can't go quick here. I average out about 30 miles a gallon in the bug, just because of its lightweightness and the fact that it's diesel. So the bug did come with its own custom fit camper shell on it, but it was a project car when I bought it. The frame of the pop-up didn't have any canvas made for it, so first thing I did was I found somebody that was willing to not only make the canvas, but also help me put on a roof. It ended up costing me somewhere upward of 2,500 bucks, so all in in this build, I'm roughly 5,500 in. I didn't bring a battery with me, but just for looking purposes, you can see, full-size queen bed. It looks like I had a little mouse friend in here. Got a sink though, some storage for food and whatnot. And the tiniest little door you ever did see. This thing is a pain in the butt to tear down by yourself though, so let's see if I can do it still. This is one of my favorite vehicles that I own just because of how happy it makes people, as I said before. Um, it's ended up on some funny Facebook pages like calling it a hoopty and kind of gnarly. People are making fun of it, but for the most part when I'm on the road or driving in around town, people are smiling and taking photos. It is ridiculous. It's meant to laugh at and it's definitely a, definitely a conversation starter. It's like every person I go by is just All right, next. So you remember how I said the white truck was in the shop for four months last winter? Well, I didn't have a daily driver and I decided to buy myself something nice. Something real nice. This is a F-350 Tremor King Ranch. Now, funny enough, when I went to go purchase this vehicle, um, I actually was going to look at something much older and cheaper. At the time, I was keeping an eye out for something nice. Like, I wanted to get, this is like the dream truck. And lo and behold, the dealership that was 30 minutes away had one in inventory that I could finally go check out in person. This is my favorite feature about this truck, you wanna see? You can get yourself a massage while you're driving. Safe to say, not in the hoopty category. This truck features a 7.3 liter V8 and has a quick zero to 60 for being a three quarter ton truck. I tow relatively light things like a fiberglass boat and my snowmobile trailer. And when I'm driving this truck, I really can't even feel them back there. Which to people that don't tow might sound like a bad thing, but it's really nice. I thought on this one, might as well spoil myself a little bit and I haven't been upset. Now, a lot of people have been asking if I'm thinking about doing a truck camper build on this thing, but honestly, it's really nice to have a truck that's just able to do truck things. And I'm planning on keeping it just like this. It's not to say in the future that I might not take off the entire bed and do a flatbed setup and put a pop-up camper on it, but right now, it does truck things. All right, although this truck is completely bone stock, the last final car isn't. And that would be my 2020 Jeep Grand Cherokee or Mercedes-Benz C63S. Also, from the last time you've seen it, it uh, is no longer stock. 
now makes over 600 wheel horsepower. They end up doing countless downpipes in a Ren Tech. One thing that you might not know about the Mercedes is uh, I had a little bit of an oopsie with it the first week owning it. Of course I had to bring it off-roading and I ended up cracking off my front lip here. This thing also just stays dirty. Honestly I wouldn't really expect anything less from my vehicles because they all, they all go down dirt roads. It's just a car. So even though I did buy this car used, it is specced out exactly how I would buy it from the shop. Um, it came with white leather seats, a beautiful carbon fiber dash, and a real nice sounding bi-turbo V8. I believe the 0-60 to 60 in it is 3.4 stock, correct me if I'm wrong, might be faster than that, might be 3.2. And after I got the tune, I, even, I don't even know what it is, but it's it's quick. Not the most practical vehicle for Minnesota. I can only use it about four months out of the year where I live. But hey, brings me some joy and I love it. Also probably not the best financial decision. Bon appétit. Mm.